Welcome to the warm-up. We're at Defiance High School today with the Scott Wagner Plumbing and Heating Warm-Up and the Defiance Bulldogs. I'm Mark Coates. Andy Lynch will join us shortly. Jerry Beauty, head coach for the Defiance Bulldogs, longtime head coach for the Defiance Bulldogs. You're kind of the dean of the WBL now. Yeah, I guess. Old man of the league. Yeah, we've, we've been, I've been at Defiance now. This is 25 years. Uh, and of course, I was at Van Wert for 12 and mm -hmm. one at Finley. So this is 38th year. So yeah, I am with uh, Mike was pretty close, Mike Mock, but he decided to leave for greener pastures, <laughs> as we all know. Yeah, speaking of Mike Mock leaving, with a lot of changes in the WBL, the coaching, I mean, you've got Doug Fry going back to St. Mary's from Wapakoneta. I think that leads to some, some question marks throughout the league this season. It really does. Well, you know, those changes uh, are all good for those teams. Um, uh, Doug Fry is an outstanding football coach, and he'll get that program back on its feet uh, to see St. Mary's not win any games for two years or whatever it was mm -hmm. is unbelievable and um, the new guy at Wapakoneta comes with a great pedigree and a good good work ethic and uh, he's in the right place they have, they have a really nice team coming back so um, those are those are all good combined with the coaches that are all in the league I've always said that the Western Buckeye League is a coaches league you know we don't put out a lot of Big Ten talent and things like that it's a lot of uh, coaches uh, really coaching kids up and doing a great job last season Defiance Bulldogs finished third in the WBL with a six and three record, six and five overall. You, you look at the, the top half of the WBL from last year, and a lot of seniors on those teams. A lot of talent needs to be replaced, including obviously your own Bulldogs. Yeah, it sure does. And uh, you know those teams are that were up there last year are going to be up there again this year. Uh, I, I think Wapakoneta is is going to be a good one, and and you know Brent Fackler taking over Kenton. I don't think they'll miss a beat over there. I think they'll still be very good, and you know there'll be some minor changes in that program I think but I don't think we'll see them overall as a league and uh, I think Salina I think they have a good defense coming back and uh, Trent I'm, I'm kind of biased he played for <laughs> me as one of my former right. guys uh, I think he's doing a great job down there so I, I think uh, that's at the top three people in the league you can never discount OG uh, Kenny will get those guys back on track down there and um, you know uh, like I said the guys around the lake down there are going to be pretty good this year and you uh, then, you know, I, I think uh, at Shawnee, I think uh, he's going to do a great job. And I uh, haven't heard much about him this year, but I, I know that he's a quality coach, you know, and going to do a good job. Elite is going to be good again. They're going to come back from that league. And Bath is, is, is going to be, I think, better than they were last year. Looking at your own Bulldogs, you have to replace your starting quarterback, Will Bat, Trey Gillum, who is a, a first-team All-League performer on both sides of the ball. How do you, you, you can't necessarily replace those guys. Who's Who are the next guys to step up at your skill positions? Well, you know, I told the kids, I said, who wants to be the next Trey Gilliam? Who wants to be the Will Bats? That, that's what we need. We need guys to want to emulate that and, and be that guy. Uh, Trey was an automatic. I mean, he's unbelievable, you know. And we have several guys, you know, when, when you convert your offense to, to a spread offense like we have, we still run the two back, but when you convert to the spread, a lot more kids. We, we've found a little bit of an influx of kids in the building that want to come out and catch mm -hmm. the ball, and rather than run the ball, you know. Right. So uh, we've got some guys lined up that that have done a great job this summer. Our quarterbacks. It's kind of strange for us. I've never, in all my uh, thirty some years of coaching, had four quarterbacks. We have four quarterbacks, and I know the old saying is, "When you have four, you have none." So I don't know about that, but we'll we'll see. They're competing. Every one of them brings something different to the table. So that is our prime position to find right now as quarterback. You know, in your you know close to 40 years coaching, is the the, prefer, the the spread, the spread of the spread, one of the biggest changes you've seen in football? Yeah, it's a huge uh, for a couple reasons. I think one, it's quarterback generated offense. If you got a good quarterback, you're gonna be able to run the do that offense very well. It used to be you could hide behind your running game if you didn't have a good quarterback. You know, and we did that for years. <laughs> uh, the other thing about that that spread offense is there's when's the last time you saw people gang tackle? There is no such thing anymore. Yeah. It's all one on one out in the perimeter. And boy, to be a great perimeter tackler uh, takes a really special person. So that's why you see all these high scores. You know, I talk to the other teams that run the spread, and, and I say, well, what do you do to defense it? And they say, well, we do the same thing you do, but you know, we we miss tackles just like everybody else does. So. Uh, that's the big thing now. It's one-on-one -on -one competition, best on best, so it's tough out there. Yeah, I mean, with, with having to do a one-on-one -on -one tackling with the safety concerns, you can't necessarily practice tackling as much as you'd like. Yeah, that's really true. You're just beating your head against the wall, finding new drills, trying to get kids to get uh, the repetitions in tackling without people bringing themselves, going to the ground and getting hurt and things like that. So it, it is a tough thing to master. A little over a month away from the season opener against Napoleon, what do the Bulldogs need to get accomplished between now and uh, 
August 29th? Well, number one priority is finding a quarterback for us that leads and, and, and at least maybe just two of them that want to take charge and guide this team. Uh, we think we have a good offensive and defensive line back with, with some bigger sized people than we historically have here. Uh, we're going to try to run the ball a little bit more this year, and we're going to try to run the ball a little bit more with our quarterback. So those are the things we're looking for. But the number one thing that has to happen here at Defiance is we have to get back to playing great defense. We haven't had a good defense here in several years. And, of course, like I just said, it's tough to be a good defense anymore tackling on the perimeter. So uh, that's what's going to be our focus here. Labor Day weekend, Friday, you make the trip to Napoleon. 7 o'clock start for that game. I, I know you, you wish it was the Thursday instead of the Friday, but you did move it up half an hour this year. Right. Well, we always try to start that earlier, and that was brought about by playing on Thursday. But like I said, the guys in Napoleon don't want to play on Thursday anymore. We won't go into that. <laughs> but uh, I still think it would be a great, great thing, and um, I wish we could do it here when we at least host. But uh, right now that's not in the picture. But uh, it's still a great rivalry, and uh, – Two towns that uh, are very much alike and do not like each other. So it's a, that's a great foundation for a rivalry. Coming off a playoff appearance last year, how did getting into the postseason last year, how did that help this program? Well, it's great. Extra week of practice and, and the ability to get into the playoffs and put that on the wall with the kids' pictures. We only put our playoff pictures on the wall, on the one in the weight room. So that's an honor around here. And, uh, you know, to get in, and then we had to play defending Division Two state yeah. champs uh, or Division Three state champs, Toledo Central Catholic. Very good team. Uh, we were a little bit outmanned by that, but uh, I'm, I'm Catholic, so I can say this. It's tough to beat the Catholics, you know, so it's that's the way that goes. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Jerry Beauty, as the Defiance Bulldogs looking to add more to the locker room wall. We'll have more with the Bulldogs after this short timeout on the Scott Wagner Plumbing and Heating warm-up. Back on the warm-up on this Scott Wagner Plumbing and Heating Preview Show in Defiance, just outside Fred Brown Stadium, joined by a couple of the returning linemen for the Bulldogs, Zach Morris to my left, nose guard and tackle. He's a senior, so is Savantre Vaughn. Did I get it? Yep. We'll call him Seva the rest of the way. I just wanted to say it once. Uh, Seva, how are things going this first day? Good to be back out here, even though you're sweating a little bit, running a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's been going all right. Uh, we've been putting in a lot of our defense and just trying to improve day in and day out, you know, going into the Napoleon game. You know, Coach talked about improving the defense. It's something that Defiance has, has been known for over the years, but last year uh, tougher to tackle on the perimeter. How have you seen uh, it get better over the summer? Well, uh, we've seen a lot of our outside guys. They've been putting a lot in, you know, in the workouts, getting faster, and uh, just improving on their mental defensive ability because you need – it's a lot of men – a uh, lot – of mental thinking when it comes to defense. No question about that. Zach Morris, we will abstain from the Saved by the Bell jokes. I'm sure you've heard enough of those over your lifetime. Sorry. <laughs> Anyhow, you guys are kind of a force in the middle there uh, on that yeah. line. Uh, a lot of confidence between you two coming back, I would imagine. Yep. There is a lot of confidence because, I mean, he's the biggest guy on the team. Yep. And we, we can put a lot of pressure on that quarterback, hopefully. And filling all the gaps. Do you guys go head to head a lot in, in drills and, and yeah. practicing? So you have that yep. distinct honor of trying to take yeah. down Savo? Yeah. <laughs> How's that Definitely. go? Who, who normally wins the, the head to head competition? I win all the time. No, all no the you time. don't. I think we need it right here. Just drop the mics. And, no, we won't do that. <laughs> uh, looking ahead, Napoleon, obviously uh, the River Rock game. You dream about it probably after it's over. You, you lost by what, five last year. Did you start thinking about it right away even though you had nine more games to go? Um. Yeah, I mean, it impacts you right after the game and kind of goes with you throughout the season. But you get over it and you keep fighting through. Sure. So. Sure. Seva, what's that game mean to you? It means a lot to me. I mean, it it means so much to everyone, the talent defiance and all of our coaches and our team. Sure. And uh, it just, it means so much to everybody. Let's talk about the offensive side of the ball. Four quarterbacks, uh, from a line perspective, they all do something different. Has this been an adjustment for you guys to get to know them, Sabo? Uh, not really. I mean, all four of them are really good guys, and we we, we have a pretty good bond with them. Okay. I mean, sometimes we, they don't even miss a beat when we're going through cadences and everything like that. All right. Well, Defiance getting ready for that opening game Friday night at Napoleon as they travel across the county line to take on the Wildcats. When we return, we'll have more with Defiance on this Scott Wagner Plumbing and Heating 
warm-up show. One last time here outside Fred Brown Stadium, talking with the Defiance Bulldogs in our second Western Buckeye League preview. Three scrimmages for these guys coming up as Wes Detter sits next to me, Zach Buer down at the end. Wes, uh, might seem a little ways away that first scrimmage, uh, home for Brian, but it's a meet the Bulldogs type of night. What does that night uh, mean to you? The community comes out, you've gotten through two days. Is it kind of your next goal, basically? Yeah, it really means a lot to show the town how we are and if we got any better from last year and kind of show out and so and show them how we do. Three scrimmages, I'm sure as players you prefer that over some teams that only do two scrimmages. You'll go to Lima Senior to be on the turf. you also uh, head to Macomb. Parts that you look forward to basically in August are those games? Yep, I really look forward to the last scrimmage because we mostly go all out just about there. And really no coaches on the field and we do kickoffs and everything and that's really, that gets a lot to the game, gets you ready for the game. Zach Buer, kind of take us through your August. You know, you're just trying to get through day by day. What's the mindset for you? Um, I take it day by day, just trying to get better every day, working because there's a lot of jobs to be to be had for this team coming off a lot of people leaving last year. So I mean, every day is important, and we I really want to beat Napoleon. So every day is beat Napoleon. Every day they get ready for that back in spring, probably during baseball. Yeah. You're saying, beat Napoleon. Yeah. Oh, oh, we're playing <laughs> baseball. <Okay. laughs> uh, couple wide receivers here. How are the quarterbacks looking? How are they different? You know, kind of their um, arm styles. Zach. We have a lefty that's actually in the front running right now. That's different. Uh, we, we roll out the other way now. And uh, just they're all, no one's really pulled them, themselves out really far. Okay. So they're all kind of in an even battle right now. They look good, though. Is that fun for receivers to have a bunch of guys throwing to them or an adjustment period? Every now and then it's it's pretty fun, but then Every now and then. <laughs> then once someone just keeps doing bad, okay. and it's just like I don't want them in there anymore. So you're casting your vote for somebody else yeah, at that yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. How about the defense? Coach talked about really getting stronger tackling on the perimeter. That he's talking to you guys. Wes, uh, how's that coming? Uh, I think it's coming well. We did a little fit up drills today, and I think we have a lot coming back in the secondary. We just lost Trey, and I feel like we'll we'll still be de pretty decent in the well, back. What are some of the things you learned from Trey over the years? <sighs> learned a lot. I mean, just watching him and the way, he, how he guarded, how he handled himself helps a whole lot for how when I was young, when I started out young, helped a lot. After that opener at Napoleon, you're home for Elida at Bath, home for Salina, home for OG. I mean, top half of your schedule, it's some good Western Buckeye League competition coming in right off the bat. Yeah, uh, we're going to have to really buck up at home and win some games. There'll be good teams. Really Try, teams. Trying to get back to the playoffs for a second straight year, the Defiance Bulldogs. We want to thank Scott Wagner Plumbing and Heating for their sponsorship of the warm-up here on WOSN.